Welcome back to another in our series of the life of the Apostle Paul, day number 9. Our passage for today comes from Acts chapter 9, verses 26 through 31. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went out and among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists. But they were seeking to kill him. When the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. When one door closes, another one opens. That's not a bad outlook on the world, unless you're looking at a car to buy. The idea of seeing the world as a place filled with opportunities takes a certain tenacity about oneself to handle the day-to-day -day disappointments. However, once a person adapts that mentality that everything that happens has a silver lining or a gain for them, then the rest is a matter of waiting for those doors to swing wide open. In our passage today, which links many other passages, Saul of Tarsus is very zealous for the Lord. He has come from Damascus, where he had preached to the point where we read in Acts chapter 9, verse 22, but Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. Now we read of what is happening in Jerusalem in verses 28 and 29 of chapter 9. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. Who are these Hellenists wherewith Saul is disputing? Well, we remember these from chapter 6 of the book of Acts, beginning in verse 1. Now, in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. According to Adam Clark, the distinction between the Hellens and the Hellenists in the Greek mind was the Hellens was of pure Greek descent, and the Hellenists were Grecian Jews. They were considered foreigners by the Jews of Judea, having lived among Gentiles and speaking the Greek language. Some of them may have been proselytes or Gentiles converted to Judaism, a point that some scholars might dispute. In chapter 6, the problem seems to have been that the Jews were being given preferential treatment over the Hellenists as it pertained to the daily distribution of money to the poor among them. Now, Saul is disputing with the Hellenist Jews in chapter 9. It has been more than three years since Stephen's death. Remember, Saul spent three years in Arabia, as we read in Galatians chapter 1, verse 18, after his conversion. Stephen is thought by many to have been a Hellenist when he disputed with others who were Hellenists. In Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 9, we read, And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. Strictly speaking, these were Jews from foreign lands that came back to Jerusalem. Now Saul, who had voted with these against Stephen in chapter 7, is arguing against them for the Lord. Their solution for Saul was the same as they had for Stephen. We read in verse 29 of Acts chapter 9, And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. Later in the book of Acts, Paul will recount this period of his life. In Acts 22, verses 17 through 21. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance, and I saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. 
And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Saul realized that being sent out of Jerusalem was not going to solve the problem. But he is thinking in terms of Jews he would be preaching to in synagogues. However, Jesus tells him that he is ultimately being sent away to the Gentiles. The very thing he is told on the road to Damascus by the Lord. In Acts 26, verse 16 through 18, we read, But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and a witness to the things in which you have seen me and to those which I appear to you, delivering you from your people and from the Gentiles, to whom I am sending you, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. The opportunity has come for Saul. The disciples are whisking him away by way of Caesarea and then back to his hometown of Tarsus. There he will remain until one who is going to need his help will come to get him. Further on in Acts, in Acts chapter 11, verses 23 through 26, we read, The report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And in Antioch the disciples were first called Christians. When chapter 9 of the book of Acts began, the persecution of the way was in full force, and Saul of Tarsus was ravaging the church. But now we read at the end of Acts, chapter 9, And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. The Lord is opening doors more and more for that small band of believers to grow there in the first century. Do you think those doors are still being opened today in spite of the opposition to the truth? Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow for another look at the life of the Apostle Paul.